can, I, can I also circle back to this, this point about the Prime Minister's statement that in being in a meeting with the Aga Khan, he was, he was not there in his official capacity, but in his capacity as a, uh, in relationship building or as a friend? Did I hear you right? Yeah, well, you see, those tests are reasonably seen to have been given. Uh, you know, the, the, the tests are, are, are objective as opposed to subjective. I'm not sure this is answering the specific question you're a asking. But um, each, you know, <laughs> each section is drafted a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. And so you, ha you have to kind of look at the exact... No, but but I, I'm just trying to clarify sort yeah. of a, yeah. a, not even a philosophical point, maybe a legal point, which right. is if... The, if um, the Prime Minister then, or any, anybody who, having received a gift and there being this sort of association, says, well, I was, I'm, I'm in the meeting, but I'm, I'm, they're just a friend. I'm not there in my official capacity yeah, yeah. as a member of Parliament or Prime Minister or Cabinet Minister. Right. That was the, that was the argument I understood uh, he made and that you reiterated this morning. Did I hear you wrong? Well, I, I mean, I think there was two or three different instances where the circumstances were different. Yeah. Sometimes uh, he was there um, in his official capacity. Sometimes he was there... Uh, when things were being discussed, right. and sometimes uh, he was there, uh, I don't know, out of courtesy because they were wanting to meet the, scene, the leaders. Every case where, he, where yeah. there was a meeting was different. So you have but, to figure but out which one you're talking is, about. Is, is in all of those cases, he's still the prime minister. Like my, well, my no, guess actually, my, he was the leader of the Liberal Party. Well, the, the, the previous yeah. ones, but the, yeah. the, the meetings that then followed. Or, sorry, there was one when he was a member, but there was, was no consequence. Right, well, but even as member of parliament, as yeah. leader of a, a federal party, as then prime minister, right. I, just, I just don't imagine a scenario in which I say, I'm, I'm taking that elected hat off, and I'm just here, I'm just hanging out with a buddy. Like, that, that doesn't... Because if you follow that line of logic... You could be popping hats off and on. It depends on at almost a convenient nature. To I mean, if you're meeting with an old school buddy that has nothing to do with anything in, that the government's doing. That's but if I'm meeting with somebody who does have something to do with what the government is doing, three hundred and thirty yeah. million yeah, well, dollars. So you're talking about a specific case. You sure, I am. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it, if my old school buddy yeah. is also somebody who has, lobbies the government, and then you better be careful. You'd think. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. You better be careful. Um, this, I got the sense from your, your just your original testimony that your definition of friendship is actually quite broad. I mean, would you, would you, you know, there's lots of people I would you're say. You're not restrictive in your nature of no, thinking I, of friends. No, it, it depends. It's a circumstantial thing as well. Sure. A friend is a, probably the broadest. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I have several cases on friendship, and... and I mean, there was one guy exonerated because I really didn't think he was a friend. He was just some, like, to drop a name. <laughs> you know, I mean, the circumstances, you just have to look at each case and sure. figure out what you're doing. So, thank, you, thank you, Mr. Cullen. I'll come back. Mr. Cullen. Almost, almost through the first half. Um, this, uh, let's pop to this friend's exception and see it as a... As, so if, if an occasion where someone were to give a, a gift that contravened the act and they weren't a friend, problem... But there's this loophole that if they were a close friend, it's okay, even if that friend has dealings with the government. Well, <sighs> under the act as it is right now. Uh, well, that's where there's some confusion. I right. mean, the fact of the matter is that uh, you know, uh, I, I think if there was an obvious case where they shouldn't be giving a gift, then and you know, there's some cases we've had where. It depends on the – sometimes if the gift is sent to an office as opposed to being given under the Christmas tree, you know? Right. It, 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 there's, there's, it, you have to look at the circumstances in which the gift of is course. given as well. I'm, I'm trying to look at this through the, through the eyes of just, as you said, the average Canadian yeah. seeing this and says, wait a second. If somebody who's lobbying the government, yeah. lobbying a minister, lobbying yeah. the prime minister – is a friend, there might be some sort of exclusion for that activity if they give them a nice gift, if they buy them a nice watch or whatever, and you say if it's, if it's egregious. But the reason, the reason it's a concern is that the Prime Minister, in your report, attempted to use this exception to say this was all okay, yeah. that somebody he hadn't had any contact with for 30 years, since yeah. the age of 13, yeah. until the time he became leader of a federal party, saw him at a funeral, his yeah. dad's funeral, well, I actually find it didn't fit within the definition of friend. It, that's, a, that's a – but even the attempt to use that definition to make yeah. the, the trip exceptional. Yeah. yeah. But you see, it, the other side of the coin in, in this act yeah. is when, you're, when you've got – you're exercising your powers. You're yeah. going to a meeting. You're yeah. making a decision. 
that's when you, a friend is exactly on the other side of the coin. That's They're right. excluded. Which, which would have been a problem for Trudeau in a yeah. different way. So it's only if you'd accepted the friend thing, but then he w went to two meetings in which the Aga Khan's interests were involved. Yeah, one way or another, there was going to be a problem. One way or another, there was going to be yeah. a problem. Yeah, yeah. This whole thing, the, the, the trip and then the follow-up meetings about the Aga Khan Foundation, yeah. if you had accepted the friend argument... That's right. I would have had a problem on the other side. Right. So right. There, was, there was only versions of losing in this. Right. There's, okay. Can I just circle back for a moment to the... Because you, in your report, you said initially it was the Trudeau family that contacted, as was said, the Aga Khan's daughter, I believe, for the March 2016 trip. Is that... Yeah. That, that's what you said in your report, anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we don't know who asked, if, who asked for the second trip, the trip that has been the attention of your the Trudeau no. report. No. You I, did you ask anybody? Um, the, I tell you, I got an awful lot of that information from my documentary evidence and uh, the, on, on the other one, the first one. And so it wasn't right. necessary for me to find that out. But isn't isn't that an interesting question to yeah, ask? It's interesting as all get out, but uh, but it's not important for the purposes of the decision. Well, why not? Because you see what I mean? Because if I... It wouldn't I, have changed any, any decision. Oh, interesting. So if, if an occasion where an MP asks for a gift or is offered a gift, you make no distinction on that? Um, I didn't see the need for it here. Okay. But do you, can you see why, the, again, back to the average Canadian watching this, if a, if a politician was out there asking for stuff as opposed to being offered, motivation becomes an interesting thing. Yeah, but it didn't matter here. Yeah, okay. Okay, I mean, it, it, there was no need to get into yeah. details that I didn't need. Uh, next up, uh, for seven minutes, Mr. Cullen. Can I stay with that for a moment, the conflict test? Because, sure, there might be a public office holder um, who has no influence on a certain field where they may own some assets. But as you move up the chain of influence... Precisely. Every they, time you change your position, you have to reassess. Well, it's particularly if you move up to places like prime minister, sure. cabinet minister, the, the field of influence you have grows dramatically. Yeah. Therefore, you would imagine the, the measures people would have to take if they want to have that job should also grow. With yeah. great power comes that great responsibility. Right. I, so to be clear, the, this loophole that exists, I don't know what you want to call I'll call it a loophole or a escape clause that says if something is directly controlled, here are all the rules right. that guide an office holder. Right. A cabinet minister. Yeah. But if it's indirect, if it's in a numbered company, if it's... Then we look for other measures. I mean, there's... Yeah, there's, but there's that a makes no sense, does it? No, to, I, to, no, I mean, I'm recommending that they get yeah. rid of that distinction. Yeah, let's, let's do but, that. Uh, but, you That's know, really whether or not that distinction... Even if the distinction has gotten rid of, if you own 100% of your assets... Yeah. In one entity, yeah. and you put it in a blind trust. What do you suppose is in your blind trust? Yeah, you, you know, be pretty stupid. Not to and so that out. you need uh, you need additional measures. And I've got uh, the, the act has the powers twenty nine and thirty I, to to establish those additions, and, and that's what our office has has uh, done. Just to step back, thank you. That's helpful. Um, and, and uh, as the committee pursues, uh, I hope we pursue strengthening the act because it needs some strengthening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anything that has 70, 80, 89 recommendations from the watchdog yeah. sounds to me like a, an act that yeah, could Yeah, well, use some of them are tiddly little things, but sure. some of them are really important. Well, yeah, not all are equivalent, yeah. but just the sheer number should yeah. strike most Canadians. Because Canadians are going to look back at this and say, are the rules sufficient right now? Yeah. In 2018, and you know, to, to keep ethical behavior, yeah, uh, but you know, the, the they're not bad. I mean, the fact of the matter is, compared to the rest of the world, we're pretty, we're pretty good. And the other thing is, the people are pretty good, generally. I mean, this, this stuff can get blown out of proportion. Generally, people want to do the right thing. Sure, but the reason we have rules is for when people do the wrong thing. We need the rules, and we need the rules, of course. Yeah, and what, we need watchdogs not for the good people doing the good things. No. We need the watchdogs and the rules for people, even the good ones, well, actually, when they're we doing the Well, I should need them for everybody so they know what the rules are. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, there's, a, there's some people will say, look, I'm, I know I'm good, so I don't need to worry about these rules. Yeah, that, no, you can't legislate out stupid. We've tried. The, uh, so the, <laughs> I want to know about the, when the Prime Minister or the Prime Minister's office saw the findings, because you said they didn't see the conclusions until you reported it. Is That's that right? right. When were the, when were the findings? Because I'm looking through the findings. The, they're all pointing in one direction. Um, yeah. When were the findings shown to the prime minister's office? When I when I showed them when I when I showed the facts. Uh, well, sorry, what do you mean by findings? What well, you said findings this earlier. Is a I don't know what that term means. Oh, excuse there's me. There's the facts yeah. and there's the analysis and yeah. there's the conclusion. 
When did you show the Prime Minister's office the facts uh, that were going to be in your report? Yeah, it'll say. I think it was in October. October? I think. Okay. Yeah, findings of fact. Sorry, I said findings. Findings of fact is the full. Yeah. yeah. So the findings of fact, those pages from, in, in your report, part two. 49 yeah. through 58. Yeah, I, I list off the four sections in the front there right. in my description. Where, where the whole friend argument breaks down, for example, because as you said earlier, what, if, if, if the Aga Khan was by definition a friend, here's the problems. You've broken mm -hmm. the act this way. Mm -hmm. If the Aga Khan is not determined to be a friend, you've broken the act this yeah. way. Yeah. So that was in October. Sometime in October. Yeah, I, I, everything I've got in my facts is what, uh, what the Prime Minister saw. In October. And his lawyers saw. Uh, in October. The, 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 yeah, the, the, the curious thing for me is that the in because we didn't have your report, we didn't have your facts, we just had this concern around this Aga Khan trip. When re re repeated questions were put to the Prime Minister, this argument about friend, friend, friend was still used. But anybody looking at those <laughs> facts would know that whether you determined him to be a friend or not, he had still broken the act. It seems just it's, – it's not well, really necessarily I mean, it, common. There wasn't just, much on the other side that got broke. I mean, there was four provisions, but actually one of them was Section 11. Yeah. Uh, 14 was okay. Yeah. Uh, there was um, the uh, uh, recusal one, 60 uh, – 21. Yeah. And then there was um, – Six one no yeah. five five is the one that was contravened that and that's sort of a general one that sort of flop flops along with the recusal it's yeah. kind of neither the here nor the here nor there it's sort of a general provision yeah. like do do the stuff right I, I found but, that Mr Trudeau failed to meet the general duty set out in, in the vacation on the island section uh, eleven Mr Trudeau contravened section twelve when his family accepted the trip by the Aga Khan yeah. section twenty one Mr Trudeau contravened section twenty one when he failed to recuse yeah. himself from two discussions. I, and then I deliberately put Section 12 in yeah. a separate part because yeah, yeah. all the facts that led up to it were different. I, I'll tell you one that real challenge like, in this. That seems like a big deal. What? That seems like a big deal. What? These contraventions of the Ethics Act for a sitting prime minister. You, you seem, you well, seem, they're contraventions, yeah. A sitting, a sitting prime minister didn't recuse himself from meetings he ought to. He took a trip he should never have taken. Mm -hmm. Even if he had gone to you beforehand and said, should I take this trip, you would have said no. I probably would have said no, okay. depending on the amount of information I was given. Right, right. Re knowing the circumstances, a reasonable person... If I knew everything I knew here, uh, that's the he, advice I would give. He, he contravened his own instruction to his own ministers on the helicopter, well, which you found. That's what I found. I, I, I guess this, some of this is the specifics, of course. Yeah, yeah. But where I'm drawn to is the ethical choices uh -huh. and the lack of prudence... Uh, from the Prime Minister and the Prime Minister's office for a trip to, to expose himself, I guess, is the concern, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to ethical violations, and as you found, exposed himself to being uh, influenced mm -hmm. and using the extraordinary power of a Prime Minister to exert that influence. I guess I, as I pull away from this and we look to the future as to how to improve all this, we can do what we can, but if, if the, the code is ask for forgiveness, not permission, it's a challenging thing for any watchdog mm -hmm. to keep but people you know, on the ethical line. I, the, the encouraging thing about it is that, it, that this particular circumstance is exposed and it explains the rules and now they're noticed. Every time a report is done, it, it enhances the, um, the uh, understanding of the rule. Well, it's, as my grandma used to say, never waste a good crisis. Yeah, if, if, right. if something shows up that yeah. uh, causes you pain, and that's pay probably the best benefit of one of these reports is that it, it, it enhances the understanding of the rules. You've, in your time up until last year, you, is it right to say you did about 253 investigations? Is, would that sound like a number? Oh, I don't know. I think it was. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, there's many, many thing, files that we open that we don't proceed to an investigation for too. And is that made public? Uh, in my report, I give the numbers and I give a general explanation of, uh, of what sort of thing it was. I don't, re I don't release the names because it, 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 I didn't re feel that it was worthy of an investigation. Um, but what I do do is sometimes I look, take some time to look in, or did, <laughs> sorry, I'm talking in the it's present, okay. but um, I look into the circumstances behind it. I, every, even if it comes from, from a private citizen or from the media, if I see it in the media, if somebody tells me about something, mm -hmm. uh, we, would, we would follow up and see whether we thought there was anything to it. Thank you, Mr. Collins. Um, 
Um, the uh, notion, obviously, uh, I voted for this motion, a similar motion yesterday. I don't need convincing because I think the opportunity for the Prime Minister to come forward and answer some of the questions, some of the questions that Ms. Dawson can't answer because she didn't make the decisions that, that pertain to the, contra the four contraventions of the Act. The Prime Minister did. Uh, in his explanation at that press conference is where I've seen it, and there was a question, I think, put to him in his town hall last night, which in both cases, if you look at the, the, test, the, the, the record, they're, they're non-answers. They're avoiding. They go back to the friend argument, actually, which today I think was a very important and incisive thing for me, that the, the entire one of the main pieces of the Prime Minister's defense of this particular decision, and even since following Ms. Dawson's report in that same press conference, was the utterance of friend, 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 as if that would have made it better. What I learned today, and I hope my Liberal colleagues learned today, is that the aspect of the friendship would have, in fact, not made it better. It would have been a different contravention of the Ethics Act. That's all. So he would have broken the rules, but in a novel and different way. But rules would have still been broken. So obviously, the uh, the I am more... Uh, in, in, in favor of the idea of the Prime Minister coming based upon what I learned and what I still don't know. The appeal, similar to yesterday, but now enhanced because of Ms. Dawson's testimony, would be my Liberal colleagues not to vote as a bloc to suggest that the Prime Minister shouldn't testify. That an op open and accountable government, I think is the name of the di Cabinet Directive, would mean open and accountable government, which would be right here. The, the questions that remain outstanding are, does the Prime Minister still rely on this as a friendship uh, situation in which it was just a gift? We don't know, and I asked Ms. Dawson this very specifically, and it's, it was not important to her, and I respect that. It's important to me. Who asked for the trip? Was the trip offered or was the trip requested? M motivation is important when you're dealing with conflicts of interest. If a, if, a, if a member of Parliament, I don't gesture towards you, Chair, but if a member of Parliament were to go out and solicit a gift, is very d different, maybe not in the final conclusion, but it is different than somebody offering a gift. The fact that the gift in this case, whether solicited or offered, would have broken the Ethics Act is just an additive, not a subtractive. So for me, the other questions that remain and in doubt is that the Prime Minister says he learned from this, he's admitted it was a mistake, but I don't actually know what specific steps his office has taken to not allow, not allow for this to happen again. I don't know if there's other circumstances in which this similar or same uh, thing has taken place. And lastly, and I'll end on this, Chair, I, I heard from uh, Mr. Erskine-Smith in his last question to Ms. Dawson about improvements to the Act. All I've heard the Prime Minister say to this point, and his opinion matters on this, clearly with a majority government, is a firm commitment that this Parliament will fix these loopholes and these uh, problems within our ethics code so that future prime ministers, cabinet ministers, MPs, doesn't matter, cannot exploit the same uh, or attempt to exploit the same loopholes that exist within our ethics law. Until I hear the prime minister actually say that, and I'd love to ask him that question, and the 35-second exchange in question period has proven to this point insufficient in drawing out the prime minister's true feelings <laughs> about not only this trip, but the need to improve our ethics code in this parliament and a contravention of his own directive to his own cabinet ministers and the fact that I assume there's consequences to breaking his rules, but there appear to be no consequences for him if he broke those rules. These seem to be substantive and real questions, and I think, I hope, committee members would have seen today that in the conversation with Ms. Dawson, this was both substantive and respectful in the way that we approach these questions, because my respect for the Prime Minister's office is such that having a Prime Minister come before us would merit and guarantee that same level of respect for him and his testimony. So I hope my Liberal friends are not only encouraged, but remain with the same questions or similar questions that I have that can only and ultimately be answered by the Prime Minister, and not in 35-second prepared sound bites and question period, but in a substantive conversation like the one we've had here today.